Again, I want to just say welcome to all those who are in week three. Everybody say week three. Week three. My name is Koba Canales. I'm Dean of Spiritual Life. And this morning, really excited about an opportunity that we have uh, to get to know a little bit of the why, a little bit of what goes behind and the heart that goes into spiritual life on campus. This year, one thing that's pretty exciting is that we do have a new uh, way that our offices have come together within this area called spiritual life. And so the hope for this morning is that you get a chance to hear of some of the reasons why uh, we come together and worship together uh, on, on a consistent basis throughout the week. You get a chance to hear why we have opportunities to gather together in small groups and study scripture and pray together and fellowship with one another. You get a chance to hear a little bit of why we have opportunities to serve around the corner and around the world. And so it's our, our hope this morning that you get a chance just to hear a little bit more of why we go about doing those things. But as I get ready to introduce us to hearing from the first office, uh, I do want to just really quickly say that when I was a college student, my first year uh, as a freshman was at a, a non-Christian school, a secular school. And I went there as a young man hoping to continue continue my relationship with Christ, hoping to continue growing. And it was so difficult to find others who were like-minded. It was so difficult to find spaces where I can just get together with others who felt the same way, believed the same things, and wanted to live in a way that was honoring to Christ. And I struggled with that. And it wasn't until about a semester in, actually, until I found a small group where we finally got a chance to meet together. And we would have meals together, study the scriptures together, worship together. We even went and served uh, together. And that was an experience that really does remind me of the scripture. Uh, command that we have in Acts chapter 2 at the beginning, the early church came together and they did those things. They broke bread together, they worshiped together, they prayed together, and they served together. And those are some of the things that we're committed to here at APU. And today, this morning, you're going to get a chance to hear a little bit of why uh, that is. And so uh, as we get ready, I remember coming in, I transferred to APU from my first year at another school. And when I came in here, I was one of those students who I went to like extra credit chapels more than you needed to go to, right? They didn't give me four chapels that week, but I, I would go there because I came into the setting thinking to myself, how awesome is it that we get a chance here to be in a setting where other people who are about the same age as me can get together and we could encourage one another in Christ. We can motivate each other to grow closer and deeper in our relationship with Christ. We can commit ourselves to the study of scripture. We can uh, ask God big questions like, Lord, how do you want to use my life, not just now, but in the future? And these are all different things that are so significant and a big reason and as to why we exist, a university like APU. And so our hope for today in Spiritual Life Chapel is that you get a chance to hear from us a little bit of what we want for you, what we want to see God do in your lives over the course of this next year. So again, you're going to hear from our corporate worship team. You're going to hear from our uh, Center for Student Action. You're going to hear from our campus ministry team. Uh, so in order to do that, we have a video. So would you turn your attention to the video screens, please? <laughs> Since its beginning, APU has been a community of learning as well as a community of worship. And chapels have been one of those key ways through which APU has lived out that calling to be a worshiping and learning community. Here in the Office of Corporate Worship, it's a gift of ours to be able to continue to steward that vision and mission of chapel through creating and really curating worship experiences that are diverse, that are challenging, that are biblical, and that are relevant to college students. And we do these things through music worship, through dynamic speakers, through creative arts, and many other things as we worship and learn together. So there are a number of reasons why I do what I do, but I'll share two. <laughs> First, I just love the Word of God, and I know that it can reconcile us to God as well as to each other, and to be able to do that on this campus is such a blessing for me. Um, the other is a selfish reason. Um, I have a daughter who's two years old, and I know that you all are going to be her future teachers, pastors, politicians, doctors, nurses, and I want you all to step into your calling so that her world is changed for um, God's kingdom. And so selfishly, I want you to do it for Eden. We get to hear a lot of great stories about transformative experiences that students have had through chapel. And one of my favorites is my friend, and she came to APU and made the choice to come to APU based off of the chapel experience that she went to. And by coming to APU and being through chapel, she really credits it with saving her life in a lot of ways. And what's funny is that I get messages from this friend all the time telling me, 
I wish I didn't live in Northern California because if I didn't, I would come to chapel and asking me, can I watch online? I want to show my friends. And what's funny is that I have a lot of alumni telling me the same thing. So if there's any way that I could encourage students, it would be take full advantage of your opportunities in chapel. So one of the challenges I think a lot of students face in chapel is that what they experience in chapel might be really new or different than what they may have experienced in their own walk of faith prior to coming to APU. And what I love and get really excited about is that we as an office have an opportunity to not just host events and experiences that students can relate with based on their own tradition, but we can also have the opportunity to educate and introduce students to new ways of encountering the Holy Spirit and engaging an authentic Christian community that challenges and enhances their view of who God is and really what it means to live as a Christ follower in community together. Well, good morning. Um, I'm going to do something that is not very like me. I'm going to go off script for a minute. Um, so I, I, this is a really surreal thing for me right now. Um, I, need to, I need to testify for a second if that's okay. I'm serious. A year ago uh, today, um, so, so I've worked here for about 10 years, but I wasn't around last year. About a year ago today, I was actually preparing to get a biopsy um, in Houston, Texas, that would lead to a diagnosis of some pretty aggressive cancer. Um, kind of filling up my body and doing all kinds of things. It led to a year's worth of treatment and all kinds of things. And the road continues, um, but uh, celebrate with me today. I, I have no active cancer in my body. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. So, uh, this is a much better place to be this year. It's also my wife's birthday. I think she's watching online. So happy birthday, Stefo. Love you. So I want to invite you to join me um, in a little imaginative exercise for a minute. Uh, so imagine with me. And you can close your eyes if that's helpful. You don't have to. Imagine that you find yourself in a desert, in a wilderness, if you will. Uh, but you are not alone in this wilderness. You see, you are actually one of a vast group of people, an entire nation, really, but this is no ordinary nation. It's a nation that's been hardened by a lifetime of wandering in the desert, of fighting numerous battles, of facing countless trials. But somehow the Lord, your God, has brought you through it all to this moment. And here you are, still in the wilderness, but poised with anticipation to step into a new and a good land. And your leader, whom you followed for decades, stands up and declares these words that will eventually be written down in a book known as Deuteronomy. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. And as you hear these words of your leader, Moses, something changes inside of you. See, it occurs to you that living well in this new land will require a commitment to the Lord, not only today, but a lifetime of practice, of regular and daily remembrance, a rhythm of learning through worship, through sound teaching, through devotion to the word of the Lord. Okay, so fast forward again, using your imagination, about a dozen centuries or so, as a resident of a small Palestinian village, your life has been relatively ordinary until recently. You see, there's this person, this man. There's just something so unique about him. And so you have been following him across the countryside, hanging on his every word and action. And one day on a grassy hillside as you journey to the next village, he says something that stops you dead in your tracks. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow me. Now, you've heard this man say some strange things before, but these words that will eventually be written down in a book called The Gospel According to Luke, they hit you pretty hard. You see, at this point, Jesus has been a, a curiosity, almost a, a strange sideshow, if you will. Uh, but this called a daily living to discipleship, to a self-sacrificial rhythm of life that forms you in a certain way. This is new. This is different. And in the years and the decades that follow, 
you can't possibly know it now. But you will come to see that as you follow this Jesus to his death, in his resurrection from the dead, as you participate in this fledgling movement known as the way, and are part of this gathering known as the church, that Jesus had actually been right all along. Following him wasn't merely about a single decision, although that is part of it and was part of it, but rather it is a daily commitment through the work of the Holy Spirit to become more like him. And so as a member of that early church, years after this moment, you come to find that Jesus' rhythms of daily living, of prayer, of worship to God, of opening the scriptures together, that these practices would serve to transform not only you as an individual, but an entire community of believers. Fast forward again. Almost two millennia this time. It's a big jump. And this time you find yourself not on a grassy hillside in Palestine, but in a small room in Whittier, California, of all places. Uh, and a handful of other people sit around you, and a passionate but solemn and serious conversation is taking place. Uh, you see, uh, the group of churches of which you are a part, uh, there's a concern that there is a lack of good training for future leaders, not only in the church itself, but in various key professions. And so your task is to establish a training ground, a school, with hopes that one day members of the next generation would come to dedicate themselves to a life of learning, of worship, of discipleship. And so in your meeting, you make plans to create a training school for Christian workers. And you're not very creative, so you decide to call it, literally, the training school for Christian workers. <laughs> and your prayer is that for many generations to come, for as long as the Lord allows the school to exist, that these patterns of daily living would be ingrained into the students. Therefore, certain classes will need to be taken to be sure. But beyond the classroom, you desire that a daily rhythm of training and discipleship would take place in conjunction with those classroom experiences. So you sketch out requirements for students to participate in community worship together, which you end up calling chapel for students to serve in surrounding cities and communities. And as you close that meeting in prayer, you cannot possibly know that this training school will one day move to a little town called Azusa, or that it would become known by another name, Azusa Pacific University. But nevertheless, you begin to imagine and to pray for the future students who you hope will become part of this movement of God. Fast forward one more time. Call it 120 years or so, give or take. And you find yourself as a student at that very school, now known as APU. Now granted, it's grown and changed since those early days, but its mission and intent have remained the same. To be a community of learners and worshipers. Of worshipers and learners. If you like, you might even use the language of disciples and scholars. So you attend classes and chapels, and you serve, but why? For what purpose? My friends, uh, the hope continues to be that on this training ground, in this unique season of life, that you would become prepared for the world you will encounter in the decades ahead, because our world is full of unknowns, full of questions and in need of a new generation of you to joyfully take up their crosses daily and to follow the way of Christ. Because to, to paraphrase Father Greg Boyle, APU is not ultimately the place that you come to. Rather, it is the place that you will be sent from. Today is the privilege of the Office of Corporate Worship to steward this space called chapel through intentional rhythms of listening to scripture, through engaging in diverse expressions of music worship, through wrestling with challenging ideas. Our prayer continues to be that chapel services would contribute to instilling in you, in us, a pattern of worship to last beyond your time at this training, cool, uh, training school called APU. Now, college isn't exactly a wilderness. Sometimes it may feel that way, though. But we're not so unlike those early Israelites, are we? Poised to enter a new land that we can't see yet. I wonder, 
What kind of people will you, will we become in the days that God has set before us? Will we be transformed for the work that God wants to do in and through us? Or will we be conformed to something else? Lord, may our regular gatherings for worship this year in chapel prepare us to be sent into that world, equipped with your truth, to pick up our crosses daily and to follow you. Amen. I hope students get a lot out of their experiences in the Center for Student Action. Whether they're serving locally, globally, or nationally, I hope students are able to step out of their comfort zones to adopt a learning mentality in all the places they go, and that they can live out their faith in so many different ways and places. My favorite stories usually start with, I never thought. I never thought I'd go, never thought I'd lead, never thought I'd meet people or be used by God. And they end with, but, but I did. I stepped up, took a leap of faith, opened up and met new people, and was used by God to advance his kingdom. And it changed everything. The truth is that God is alive and active, and we get to partner with him in the work that he's doing locally, nationally, and internationally. And just remember, Jesus didn't come to be served. He came to serve and invites us to do the same. That question actually takes me back to 1979 when I first went to Mexico with APU. I, my youth pastor came to me and asked if I would help take the youth group to Mexico. And I went down and served in a church just outside Mexicali and uh, worked with the church. Pastor Polito was the, the pastor there. And uh, we got close. My life was changed from that week. And the deeper transformation that I saw in a fellow student that was pretty jaded that I thought Jesus would never reach she was completely changed after that week. Well, fast forward a few week, you know, a few years, I volunteered with Mexico Outreach. I ended up attending here at APU. I became a student worker, and uh, I started to work full time after, after college and worked with Pastor Bolito for several years. After a few years, we started doing a Mexicali kids camp. And uh, on that first kids camp, he brought his granddaughter Mimi on that very first one, and she received Jesus in her life. And it was amazing what the Lord did because over the years she became a college student, studied language, and she came back and actually led that Mexicali Kids Camp. And uh, it was just amazing to see how the Lord works through generations and across borders. When people think of the work we do, I'm often met with the idea that you have to be super spiritual or a certain type of person or even called to be a missionary in order to serve. But that's just not true. God uses any and every person in order to advance his kingdom. If you're thinking of serving locally or globally, I would just encourage you to do it because our default as Christians should be to go because in reality, we were made to do this. Man. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You guys, I'm already fired up and we're only halfway through this chapel. This is good stuff. I'm Karen, I'm the director for mobilization in the Center for Student Action. Thank you. Wow, you guys, so great. I love that Jason talked about the institutional heritage that we have here at APU. APU started as that training school for Christian workers in 1899, and from the very beginning, service has been a significant part of that heritage. In fact, the university's first president, Mary Hill, you may have seen her. She's on West Campus. She's about this big over by the theater, right? Mary Hill, she's the university's first president. She left after one year because she felt a call on her life to go serve as a missionary in China. The third president left after two years to go serve as a missionary, and so on and so forth. Service is a significant part of the lifeblood of this institution. Through the years, beginning with the first enrolled class in 1899, which consisted of 12 students, count them 12, 
to now over 10,000 students, undergraduate, graduate, and professional students who are currently enrolled at this APU, we have the legacy of being difference makers in our world, in our neighborhood, in our communities, around the corner and around the world. What does it mean to be a difference maker? I'll tell you what, my journey being a difference maker was certainly not like what I thought it would be. I came here to this institution, like many of you sat in these same seats. My undergraduate degree is in theater here. Woo, where are my theater people at? <laughs> I wanted to be an influencer. I wanted to be on Broadway. I wanted to do all the things. I wanted to make art and creativity and all of those things come alive. And when I was a student here, just like many of you, sitting in these same seats, I got the chance to participate in service. I went on a relief team to New York and Washington, D.C. just a few months after September 11th had happened. I participated in Bridges as an Alpha leader. I participated in an action team to South Africa and then led an action team to South Africa. And my understanding of being an influencer was radically changed. No longer did I care about influencing people for money or fame or all of those things. I wanted to influence people for the goodness of Jesus Christ. Because I saw Jesus at work here in the city of Azusa as well as every single place that I went around the world. In the Center for Student Action, let me assure you, we are not bringing Jesus anywhere. Jesus is already working, and we get the privilege of joining alongside him in that work. Here in the city of Azusa, thank you, yes. Here in the city of Azusa, in the United States, and in every other country that we go to, God wrecked me for service through my time at APU, and I realized that what it was that I thought I loved about theater, it was actually what I loved was changing people's perspectives. And I was excited to do that through ministry. And we get the chance as students at this university to change people's perspectives. And my hope is through your own service that your perspective will be changed. In the center, we want to give you the chance to practice what you're learning in the classroom outside of the classroom. Because exactly like how Jason quoted Dr. Greg or Father Greg Boyle, right? APU is a place that you are going to be sent from, either in a few months or in a few years from now. We want you to develop and cultivate a heart for service so that by the time that you exit this institution and walk across the stage, you have gotten the chance through service to develop your faith and to develop your calling, that you've understood through service who God has called you to be and why. Service is a part of this legacy of this institution. And now you as a student of this institution and me as a student of this institution and Mary Hill as a student of this institution have the privilege and the responsibility of growing our faith and joining in the work that God is doing in the, in the world. Jesus, we thank you for the service that is happening on this campus and off this campus. We thank you for the ways that you are so clearly moving in Azusa and Los Angeles and the United States and in every other country. Thank you for allowing us, a group of busted, broken down people, to participate in that work alongside you. You are good, Lord, and your mercies endure forever. In your name, amen. Our campus ministry team is here to support students as they take intentional steps to grow in their faith while they're here at APU. We do this through discipleship ministries, D groups, uh, mentoring, and pastoral care and counseling. We really believe that discipleship and scholarship 
go hand in hand. And when you put the two together, you're going to get the most out of your academic experience and your time here at APU. We want every student to have an opportunity to grow in their faith at whatever level they are ready for. And we think we have a place for you. In my role here in discipleship, I often hear from students uh, a concern uh, that either they have to be a super Christian and that they have to have it all figured out to be in D groups or mentoring or that because they're a Christian they already have all the answers and so they don't need to be in a group or with a mentor and I would encourage any student uh, that discipleship is developmental uh, it's relational and it's process oriented and all of us are in process nobody has it all figured out and there's really truly a place for all of us to learn and grow together in discipleship community my hope is that students would develop the capacity to think about their life experiences and reflect on how those experiences have shaped their view of God and how they relate to God. And sometimes this is messy when our theology says God is faithful, but we experience God as absent. And this is where pastoral care and counseling does some of the deeper work of helping students reconcile their theology with their experiences. Well, good morning, everybody. We've, we've talked a lot about things that you get to do here at APU. And I, I keep thinking back about how many times I've had students sit in my, in my office and say, oh, I have to go to chapel, or why do I have to do service credits? And I get, always get to tell them, you don't have to, you get to. Have you ever put on a pair of glasses and things look different, right? What we're trying to do this morning is help you put on those lenses of the reality of what we're trying to accomplish here as an institution, as a university that says we put God first. So there are opportunities that everyone gets to participate in, gets to participate in. And then there are some opportunities that everyone gets to choose to be part of, and that's where my office comes in. That's where my team comes in, the campus ministry team is here to provide opportunities for students who say, yes, I'll go to chapel. Yes, I'll pay attention to faith integration in my classroom. Yes, I'll serve. And I want to have maybe conversations with other students about faith. And maybe I want to sit with a pastor one-on-one -on -one to kind of wrestle with these things that are kind of challenging what I've known since I came here. Our team is here to give you those opportunities to be part of a discipleship group, to be part of a mentoring relationship, to be part of being intentional about where you're walking and where you're going. So for those of you who say, I think I've got it, I think I've got enough, maybe I'm part of a local church, chapel is good, I'm feeling good, I'm going to move forward, okay, great. But for those of you who are saying, I just feel like I want to do a little bit more, like I want to participate in a little bit more, because let me tell you, it doesn't get easier from here. This is a place where it's all laid out for you, and I want to invite you. The table is set. There are things for you to learn and grow in, and we want you to have every single possible opportunity to grow in your faith while you're here because we are sending you out. We are all going to go out into that world, and we want to be as ready and equipped with rhythms and practices as we could possibly be. So that's our invitation to you from the campus ministry office and from the entire spiritual life team. We are here because we believe that God has something for every single student. No matter where you are in your faith journey, God has something for you. You're not here by accident. You're here on purpose. So I'm going to invite Pastor Leah to come and give us a benediction, give us a blessing this morning. So would you welcome Pastor Leah? Let us pray. Father, um, Thank you for all that has been said today. My prayer is simple for these your students, these individuals that you have brought to be a part of the APU community this year. Would you allow them, at whatever stage they are in their process and on their journey, would you allow them to encounter you in undeniable ways? May they know deeply that you are real, that you have called them for such a time as this, and that you desire to work out your purpose in their lives. May they feel known by you, and may they feel loved by you. 
In your name, Jesus, amen. You all are dismissed. <laughs>